Hello, the internet. Good evening. Uh, we are Massive Damage Avengers, and we're here to play some Hellbreakers. Woo! Welcome <laughs> to the stream and to the Welcome hanging to out. Hell. <laughs> um, this is an Expanse RPG live stream. This is our second episode. If you missed the first one, you can find it on YouTube um, under Skyhammer Press and Hellbreakers, etc. Are we hearing the sirenscape? I'm not hearing the sirenscape. I don't hear it. Oh, a little it bit. Is. There it is. It was just in a in a quiet lull at that particular moment. Um, my name is Merrick Moyer, the game master. Uh, pronouns are he, him, and we don't have that many droids in the expanse, so I'm going to turn them off. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, uh, we are Roll Twenty Ambassadors, which means. Uh, for our various virtual tabletop needs, we will be using Roll20 tonight, a pro version. Um, if you haven't heard of Roll20, go to Roll20.net, check it out, free account if you want to use a virtual tabletop and game online. And let's see, other cool things, um, Green Ronin Pub, uh, Green Ronin Publishing Woo! has uh, released a new adventure for the Expanse RPG. Um, four ninety nine for a PDF adventure called Secrets of Lemuria. It introduces the Ringgate Network and traveling interstellar to interstellar destinations. Uh, if you want to go and pick that up, you should, and you should use our code Hellbreakers for five percent off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super fun, super cool. Um, just a lot of, another couple of things before we get started. This campaign uses a whole bunch of bounties, and uh, you can see all of the current active bounties and people that uh, the crew of the Hound of Hades might be going after at skyhammerpress.com slash hellbreakers. And you, uh, our lovely viewers, can increase the bounties should you choose. If you uh, cheer with bits on Twitch, then you can increase the bounty by 1,000 UN dollars for every one dollar you cheer, or sorry, one, uh, 100 bits you cheer. But if you want to donate to Roll vs. Evil, which is a charity uh, founded by Modiphius Entertainment and um, currently supporting uh, charities working and operating in Ukraine, you can donate to our link and for every dollar you donate, you can increase a bounty by 2,000 UN dollars. So, a little bit more bang for your buck when you help in the real world. Um, and you should. And you should. Please do. Uh, all of the various links are uh, in the About page on Twitch and on um, skyhammerpress.com slash hellbreakers. Uh, that's about it for announcements and early things. Uh, so we are going to launch our brand new intro video. Ooh. What? Yeah. That was amazing! Also, if you want to see it on YouTube, it'll be there in like 10 minutes. Um, okay, another cool thing. Let's show that art again. So special shout out to our uh, excellent and wonderful friend, uh, honeybell.art on Instagram, who did our character art for this. Ooh, look at those beautiful art faces. She's a witch at capturing people's brain essences and putting it into art. <laughs> it's insane. Accurate. Correct. I only have experienced this twice, but it's been perfect every time, and I don't get it. It scares me a little, but I <laughs> love it. All right. Are we ready to go? Yeah. 
when last we saw the crew of the Hound of Hades, uh, you just apprehended a saboteur and would-be bomber in New Trenchtown, a small community on Augia. Daniela Balderas ships on the Star Serpent, and locals say the crew promised repercussions when the town refused to give them shelter from the law. Uh, flush with cash in your accounts from this bounty, you return to your ship to plan next steps. That's when a new opportunity comes in. Noah Sharp, a.k.a. Dr. Gulliman Rochade. So, um, we didn't deal with this last time. We did level up to two, but you can now go ahead and take your breather um, after you finish an action um, encounter. You can roll 1d6 and add your constitution and your level. So you will get to add two because you're level two now. Nice. And that's Ooh, how, many... how about I roll oh. max? Max, nice. max, max. And that is how Amount much four fortune. Today we get? That is how much fortune you will recover. Ooh. I'm also to the tippy tip top. Excellent. Good. And James is just going to pour himself a drink and sit back as everyone recovers. <laughs> I mean, I barely, I barely lost any. I is think it, I lost is it, fortune by is it diving. The drink? Oh no, I don't think I lost that bottle. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is it Jerry's drink? Oh mm. God, I don't know. Moonlight. No, I think I'll have my own private reserve. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that's that's what you think. I broke into that weeks ago with Miles. It's gone. S swapped, <laughs> swapped it out like like teenagers <laughs> stealing their parents' <laughs> alcohol. We're not up to your rich boy shenanigans. They <laughs> took it. We're like corking it and rewaxing it. Ooh, so fancy. I mean, engineers got the skills, right? Exactly. Not my first time stealing alcohol. <laughs> um, so your ship, the Hound of Hades, it is a retrofitted Mulan class gunship. So about a dozen of these were brought out in the sort of colonizing group with the UNN Lenape, the uh, the big like battle cruiser that um, the UN has uh, sort of tasked to help with the OMAC Corporation's uh, settling of the Cerberus system. So the Mulan class gunships, they're pretty out of date. They're known for being um, uh, short distance, uh, like little torpedo boats, but uh, to operate here in Cerberus system, they were retrofitted. They lost a little bit of their agility so that they could go longer range. So now they're full system ships, but they're just a bit bulkier because they had to tack on a little bit more reaction mass and a little bit more um, to support long-term Epstein uh, operation. Yeah, so that's why they had to hire such skilled pilots to make up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hire. That's right. Um, and so it is... Just bring it up. You can see it on roll 20 just to see the inside of it. It's a spaceship of some kind. It's a spaceship. And so, you can see, you know, relatively small as the as the ships go. It's um, six decks uh, with small bunks. It's crewed with, you know, four to eight people. Uh, you got your flight deck, um, crew quarters, galley, cargo hold, engineering and machine shop, and water storage at the bottom. It's got a nice sort of bulky, uh, heavy-shouldered silhouette, um, and your ship is currently uh, landed in atmosphere here on Augia, um, vertically, uh, just like you'd see in um, what's it, season four. Oh yeah, when they <laughs> exactly. When they arrive on um, Illus. Nightmare in the, Realm. In the books, they Rick, land horizontal. Rix has True. dibs one of the bedrooms away from the bathroom. 
Yeah, one I of think, these bigger okay. ones. Okay, now I feel like that's something that we need to sort out. Okay, figure out before it's who. Very yeah. important. Let's roll initiative to see who got the bathrooms away from, or the bedrooms away from the bathroom. I'm down for a rolling initiative with my poor dexterity <laughs> and plus two bonus. <laughs> the fast pilot, yeah. How do we roll initiative again? Let's go. Uh, make a dexterity uh, test uh, D6? with a bonus. Uh, so 3d6, one of them off, but we're not going to count stunts. Actually, no. If you, uh, No, we're not going to count stunts, but if there's a tie, the drama die will figure the tie. <laughs> I only rolled a 17, man. Jeez. All right, James I got an eleven, with, so I think I'm by the bathroom. James with a seventeen, Jerry with an eleven. I can't do math. Sixteen. Ooh, okay. Rick's with a sixteen. Fifteen. <laughs> I get a toilet room. All right. Um, Roll two sixes. So. They're even smaller <laughs> as well because of the shape of the of yeah. the room. Exactly. All right, Tyler. Uh, which one does James claim? I'll take bottom left. All right, Jen with the sixteen. Which one does Rick's claim? Bottom right, baby. <sighs> Trash. <laughs> so sad. Why did I suggest this? We could have just lied. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Patrick, which one does Miles claim? Uh, they're both trash. I'll take the top left. <laughs> Everything's always fun when you're winning. And there you oh, go, God, Jerry. I love that token. Katie right there. Those tokens are insane. Honestly, I like that you picked the one that's right beside the toilet. <laughs> How are they not both right beside the toilet? Well, one's closer than the other, really. <laughs> yeah, one's beside the thing. <laughs> okay. Just as much poop coming out at you. I'm probably just gonna sleep in the machine shop, anyways. Put up a hammock or something. Those crash couches all over the place, right? Yeah, yeah. Like little ones that fold out from the wall. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, you'd have to. Now we got a shit, shit, (laughs) shit ship, and there are no crash couches. A shit, shit. All right. Well, let's head back to just player focus with the art up again. All right, so you're on your ship. You're settling in. You've you've handed Daniela in to the local authorities. The um, the bounty has been cleared, and the UN uh, credits, UN dollars, have been deposited in your accounts. You're sitting on your ship. New bounties roll in, and you see that there is one here on Agia. Hot dog. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. I don't Are know we... why, but it just occurred to me that there would be possibly ramifications of our actions. Uh, because the crew of the, was it the serpent? The something serpent? The star serpent. The star serpent might be not too terribly pleased that we apprehended one of their uh, crew. Uh, it literally just occurred to me as uh, uh, the universe was telling us uh, the events of our past that perhaps we people might not be super happy with bounty hunters to you know bring that to everyone's attention I don't know if you were thinking it but suddenly I am I thought it was the most popular profession (laughs) everyone loves them everyone loves bounty hunters only make friends when you're a bounty hunter yep that's what happens in every incarnation of a bounty hunter ever no, James uh, needs some ship specs for his uh, simulation simulator. So, uh, what's the Star Serpent have? <laughs> Maybe we'll put those in <laughs> so he's prepared, just in mm. case. That's I was thinking if Miles idea. was thinking of that, then you know, okay, might as well. You um, you check the registries and um, you don't find anything uh, reliable on uh, on the Star Serpent. At this point, it is just a name. It's insanely ominous. Anyway, so we got some guy here in the woods. 
Okay, so uh, the bounty comes in. A uh, new one for Noah Sharp, 50,000 UN dollars. Um, this guy is uh, a convicted murderer in Soul System. Uh, according to the details, uh, and, you know, this catches your eye because it's one of the very first uh, kill bounties that you've come across. Um, Earther, uh, he was operating under an assumed name, Dr. Gulliman Rochade, as uh, a geologist here on Augia. Shipped out with all of the various colonists, worked with the scientists, and... Uh, Along the way, he was discovered um, and identified as Noah Sharp, who had killed six of his grad students uh, back on Earth and disappeared. And people assumed he was still there on Earth or Luna, just sort of uh, blending in with the, with the populace. But here he is... Uh, couple of million kilometers away a um, couple hundred million very far through the gates um, he was being held in uh, zealous colony uh, which is you know a couple days journey by um, by ground vehicle you know, very quick if you were to take your ship. And uh, he escaped from the holding cell, uh, took one of the other scientists hostage, and fled um, into the uh, Badlands, into the dry, empty areas of Augia. Into the unknown. I was going to say. Into the unknown. It's probably... We should probably let him go. There's no grad students on this planet, so everyone's going to be A-OK -okay safe, but there you go. Maybe that I scientist think... is also a grad student. I mean, also, I don't think he is a serial killer who only kills grad students. I think he's a person who kills people regardless, and it just happened to be a bunch of, like, six grad students is way too many grad students to have killed. That wasn't like, whoops, an accident. <clears throat> Also, like, 50,000 for six grad students? That's not even 10,000 per student. They're grad students. They're grad students. <laughs> they were people, okay? They're but lucky that there's a bounty. It's not Earth that's putting out this bounty, right? It's OMAC group. Yeah, Earth so is like, say, I don't even care. You six people are dead, great. Earth is like, yeah, I have... 20 more people who want to fill that spot, so... Actually, oh. Omak Group wants to get a bunch of grad students out for a summer job, but they got a grad student murderer running around. <laughs> They're like, we can't <laughs> take care of them. <laughs> can't open Camp Crystal Lake right now. <laughs> <laughs> that joke landed way harder than I expected to, and I feel so, like a crazy high from it. Well done. Uh, Very good. <laughs> uh, do we have, like, some sort of... car space car actually i feel like that would be something that james would have looked into like he wouldn't want to be striking it out on foot at least yeah i don't want to walk from <laughs> saddled up bear camels or something <laughs> bear camels um I mean, I didn't... we're the future yeah no if you yeah, so didn't james like spend his money to get a sweet all-terrain jeep atv I mean, or he's like super it, impractical it, and gets like a one-person bike. <laughs> We're like, what? I thought he spent all his Fucker. money. On that. <laughs> if you no, want, he, he wouldn't do that. Yeah, if you wouldn't do that. If you want, uh, you can make a um, like a retroactive income test to buy a vehicle that you can uh, put into your cargo hold. Um, you know, like the mule on Firefly. Yeah, well, that's exactly they, what I was they thinking. They had a uh, basically a side by side in season four when yeah. they were ripping around on the planet. So yeah, yeah. Or or you can that. go to Zealous Colony and you could see if there's something that you can rent from uh, somebody local. Oh yeah, rent. I think rent <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Yeah, we can rent. Are we gonna yeah. sleep tonight? Anyways, it's not like we're gonna catch him. Are we gonna go tomorrow after pancakes? Yeah, I don't want. 
Yeah. Go tonight. That's a terrible idea. Go in the middle of the night. Actually, no, <laughs> cricket wolves. Are we still? Are we still in the same uh, town we were in last episode? Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're definitely gonna have a night in the bar. Have some That's fun. a very good point. We're gonna yeah. strut in like we're like super badass. Strut back into the bar with a strap around our hats. <laughs> <laughs> you are the only person wearing a hat. <laughs> I mean, people aren't living on stations great. anymore. I mean, I'm still going to sleep on our ship, though. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I feel like no we point would okay. be. Thing in town. Yeah, let's well, go depends if yeah, we'll you have the toilet room or not. You might be renting a room. <laughs> it's not that bad. So, yeah. We, we drink, we sleep. Next morning, rent transportation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just pulling up. Here we go. Um, and if we want to do a drinking contest, I get a plus one bonus to the result of each drama die for my carousing talent. <laughs> and, or a drama die. Uh, subtle hint. That perhaps drama we should die. do a um, Okay. So. Uh, they don't have something for vehicles, but we take a spaceship. It's probably this... in the range of a shoulder mech. So a small drone is a 14, a shoulder mech is a 15, and a construction mech is a 16. So I'd say income 15, you know, between a construction mech and a small drone. That seems to be where we are. Can we get four shoulder mechs? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I would like one. <laughs> Get your get your shoulder arms on. What I'm imagining I, is Ripley. I think it's like a yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah absolutely. Ten days later, we're still slowly yeah. <laughs> dancing. Our way Why did we over. pick these? These are so expensive. <laughs> we could lift a lot. The guy's walking ahead of us. Like well, I don't know what your like right. jaw gets me away from you. So we're gonna go with uh, James for this income test. Most likely, that makes sense. James yeah. did the uh, did the purchasing of your uh, of your vehicle, and so uh, the income test is a fifteen. Yeah. So how do? Yeah, let's run down income tests for anybody new to the system, which are on page, which includes people who are new to this game and who have just arrived in the Cerberus system. Mm, absolutely. Yes. Uh, okay. So an income test. Uh, they're used to determine what you can afford and what goods and services you can reasonably access. There's no actual like dollar, like you're not putting gold pieces into your uh, into your pouch or anything. Uh, income score reflects a character's buying power. Every item has a target number to purchase, this case 15, also called its cost. To purchase an item, make an income test against the item's cost. So you need to equal or exceed this uh, 15. An income test is just like any other regular ability test, 3d6. Uh, plus your current income score. If your test result equals or exceeds the cost of an item, you successfully purchase it. If you fail, you can't afford it at this time, and you will lose your temporary income bonus. I mean, this is retroactive, so you could choose to risk your uh, income bonus, or you could just say, I didn't have my temporary bonus before, and if you fail, you won't lose it, but... Let's just throw it all in. I'm pretty sure you're going to succeed. We can't hear you, Tyler. Okay, how about now? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, eh. it slightly got pulled out the mic, headphone mic. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I was gonna say I keep thinking of Arrested Development. It's a banana, Michael. How much can it cost? Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is stand. what is your income? Uh, it's eight. So. Okay. So, probably. uh, if your current income score is, uh, plus four is equal to or greater than an item's cost you automatically succeed. In this case, no, because it's a 12, not exactly a 15. So, 3d6 plus 8. You need to get a 15. Welcome to our level, pleb. <laughs> I you have to buy things. Of two. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, so I rolled, oh, plus my bonus, a 20. So I'm going to get one of the nicer models, like not the not the Honda. <laughs> What's the maybe drama the, die on? Maybe Audi. What's the value oh, it's a four. It's a four? Okay. Uh, you get something that um, it's 
it's nice. It looks durable. Uh, it's got a little bit more flash than is probably necessary. Um, but you're actually fairly confident that it is in good working order. Nice. And a four-seater. Hopefully. And a four-seater. Absolutely. But it's an off-roading one, so the back two seats face backwards. Ooh. <laughs> Roll initiative. He's back, yeah. I called shotgun. Jerry and Ricks. Oh, I thought you were in the back with me. No, I called shotgun. Oh. That's fine. You can be cool in the back with me. Shotgun slap. What? I don't remember the rules of shotgun slap. We used to do all the time in Merrick's car. I remember the words, but I don't remember the rules. I don't either. <laughs> we fought each other a lot, though. All right. So. I mean, we can roll for it if you want. Pat. No, I'll sit I'll, like a pouting child back. in the back seat. Um. Okay. So. You uh, uh, go out to the No Exit Saloon, get your drinks, um, party it up, play some Gol Go, put some music on. And then you head back to um, uh, the Hound of Hades, sleep through the night. In the morning, uh, get a little bit of food in your galley. Uh, it's got a pretty good, you know, coffee maker, if uh, that's something that you need. And um, just a quick pickup, fly over to Zealous Colony. That is Z-E-L-O-S. So um, this colony is uh, a lot like... It is a lot like New Trench Town. It's a little bit bigger. More of a... Um, uh, like a... Business area, municipal area. There's like... Um, a couple gambling establishments and drinking places up. There's um, shops and homes above uh, various shops. A lot of it is still built in that like very prefab um, modular build. Like they dropped a bunch of uh, flat packed walls, pulled them up, and then they're sort of like building on top of that as they go. But as you're sort of flying in over this, uh, you know, dusty brown type town, you can see some of the outlying farms. Uh, this one is, uh, you know, more populated because it has uh, better access to water. Um, and it does have sort of the similar plateaus that are good for your ships to land safe places for the ships to to set down so we rake the city with gunfire mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no. yeah, just I was unload the that PDCs we'd... yeah just strafe fully they'll never suspect it and all their stuff is ours wow that was. Um, now we are the bounty. <laughs> now yeah. you are the bounty. Four we, kill we bounties go out. Yeah, we flipped the game real quickly. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Now you're hiding in the cake for pirates. And. <laughs> Do we then play other characters who hunt our own characters? Mm -hmm. Do we role play against each other? That's too much. Let's not rake the town with gunfire, shall we? Cool. So you set down uh, a little bit outside of town, and uh, you can unload your vehicle and roll on in. Figure out what you want to do. Nice. Well, I think uh, first things first, James has this uh, magnetic bobblehead that detaches from whatever he's piloting. So he plops it on like the, like the dinosaurs, right? The, mm hmm wash has what does it look but like they stay on a little better he doesn't have to blast them off the deck oh mm -hmm. it's a little little chameleon that bobs its head up and down it's got googly yeah. eyes yeah in real nice. life i've always had a bobblehead chameleon in every single one of my cars 
<laughs> and he's, he's made it through a, a lot of miles, yeah. He's really, like, a different color on one side than he is on the other because of his sun exposure. It's like, half green and half, like, light, light brown. Hmm. It's because he's camouflaged? <laughs> Clearly. All right. Um, well, I mean, I think we should uh, probably try and figure out exactly where this guy went. I mean, out of the woods is a pretty big uh, area. Yeah, we we could try hiring a guide or at least ask for well, some meant, directions. Yeah, I meant like talk to humans around here yeah. and say, hey, this guy was here. He obviously escaped with a person. Uh, w- uh, what happened? Did nobody chase him? What happened? Well, I mean, they have a bar here. So, <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm okay. That's where people will be. Let's I go. Mean, they also have a sheriff. <laughs> yeah, sheriff might be at the bar. I mean, you have to check there first. <laughs> okay, we go in. We shoot a guy. Tell him to call the sheriff. I Don't see shoot this. Are you two? How about you guys like go to the bar, and Rix and I will go talk to the sheriff. Because James just wants to pull in his new like vehicle in front of the bar. Is it like an off roader <laughs> kind of thing? Yeah. James oh, just oh, wanted to have fun. Don't know how much I trust the two of you's going to talk to a government figure uh, by yourselves. Ah, we can all go. Oh, I also we got this. don't want to go. I would like to go to the bar and not to a figure of authority. Ah. Jerry and I have this. We're good. Well, a few drinks will take your mind off that. Eh? You're right. Let's split the group immediately. Works best for everyone at all points ever. All right. So, um, do you like drive by the uh, the administration building and drop off Ricks and Jerry? Yeah, who are facing backwards, so I can just like step on it. <laughs> I think I also had one of the back seats, so oh, get, I, right. I, was, I called shotgun. <laughs> yeah, though. never mind. As soon as Jerry, that. as soon as Jerry gets out, I scramble rapid pace to get in the front seat, so I'm not driving a, like alone in the back seat while you're in the front, like a weirdo. <laughs> like my hand was on the like the latch to click out the seatbelt, like. But all right. aren't like all chauffeurs named James? James, drive me to the bar, please. James, go around the block and come be back in ten minutes. Um, all right. So, Rick's and Jerry uh, hop out. Miles pops back back into the front, and uh, James and Miles tear off towards a bar. Uh, for Jerry, I'm on our horse. <laughs> Somebody rides through town on a bear camel. They go that fast. You should have taken those. <laughs> they don't go that fast. They are slow moving <laughs> Yeah, that's what I imagine with camel. Although mm-hmm. camels can move. Camels can quick. move. Yeah. yeah. And so bears can move. Too. They're insanely fast but, then. But not put together. <laughs> <laughs> together, <laughs> speed to very lumbering. Um, okay. So the administration building, uh, this one definitely gives you the sense of uh like a lot of overwork like understaffed there's um like stacks of uh of of crates and notes and various things like all over all of the surfaces and uh you get uh someone up at the front um who is uh, an older looking, let me see, scorpion, yeah, right, it's an older scorpion, um, older looking earth man, who kind of is, uh, uh, like, going through a couple of things on a terminal, and when you come in, looks kind of surprised to see you come in, like, to see people come in, and says, it's- is he also going through some things in life? Because I really thought that's what you were going to say. <laughs> He's going through a couple of things. There's, um, you know, trouble at home. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's too much to get into right He's, now. he's not going to bring it up in a work setting, though. Um, 
you know, you got to get to know him a little bit more. He was like really surprised we walked in because we're so good looking, right? Exactly. Wow. Uh, and he says, um, hi, um, how can I help you? Well, um, you don't, uh, you new to town? Do you need, uh, lodgings or? I don't know why we're here, so you gotta take the lead. <laughs> Jen had you stepped away from the computer. I thought you were... I thought you were going to say something. You were going to face. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I love that the two of you walk into the sheriff's office and he's like, oh, there's people. Uh, what's, what can I do for you? And they're both like, I, I, I don't know what. I, I don't know why we're here. We look really <laughs> guilty. Like we committed he's like, <laughs> why are you turning yourselves in? in? The back room. <laughs> yeah, he's like, just right back here. What's the What's their bounty's name again? Noah Sharp. Thank you. Um, hi there. We are we're bounty hunters, and we're looking for Noah Sharp. And we know he came through here a little while ago. Just wondering if you had any information for us. We know uh, he came through here. Is what Rex adds to that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of <laughs> looks at you and kind of does like a oh. Um, arrest her. Uh, you probably want to talk to Sheriff Hands. Um. Let me just, uh, yeah, Sheriff Hands. His name's Hands. Um, <clears throat> says, uh, Sheriff, uh, uh, two bounty hunters here to see you about the sharp thing. And you hear, like, a little bit of a creak in the floor and a back door opens up. And, um, another, <laughs> uh, another sort of, um, weather-worn... Uh, man comes out. He is um, Belter, uh, dark skin, narrow face, uh, long black hair, and uh, he sort of he definitely looks like the sort of station security kind of guy, like a career cop that may be retired and then just kind of continued being a cop. Um, and he walks up and he kind of leans on the desk and he says, Always happy to help with um, bounty hunters coming through. You know, we don't have the uh, resources to go after uh, People who head out into the Badlands. How can I be of service? Can he have spurs and a belt buckle? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> He's got all of the I affectations need... now. I need to know how many days till he retires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, gonna be at this job until I die. So Couldn't have it any other way. Okay, Jerry, what do we need to ask? <laughs> Just wondering if you have any information on Sharp. Like, which direction did they head? When, what time did he leave? Hmm. About noon yesterday, he, um, used some sort of implement he had pulled up out of the floor. Jimmy, the door open. Blended into the crowd. There's security footage of him taking uh, Specialist Botero hostage. Loading him onto a cart. And they headed northwest. Is a cart like a vehicle? Yeah. So um, he can show you the uh, the footage of it, and it's pretty similar to what you've got, but like a little bit more short range, not as rugged, um, more like something that moves 
heavy boxes around in the town. <clears throat> also, he said he had, um, like, it was security footage. Is there audio with the security footage, or is it just video? Just video. Sheriff, can we just examine the cell? Um, he wants to... I'm going to need a communications test from you because he's only going to let you examine the cell if you're coming off as professional. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, we're in trouble. I have a bunch of communication things, but off drinking at the bar instead yeah. of helping. You have a zero <laughs> in communication? Ditto! So what do I just roll it? What's the difficulty? Um, difficulty. Even I have is... a two. Oops. Whoops. Um, Actually, that's why we're off socializing. Yeah. Difficulty is going to be a 13, which is challenging. I got this. You do got this? Three ones. That'd be a five. Mm. <laughs> and he says, but, but I got two twos and a one on stunt. Nice. Or the drama. Ooh. Um, and he but says, does the one on the drama make a turn? No. Six. Uh, oh. Six on the drama die when you succeed. And he says, um, you're not going to see anything in there. He just okay, we're not going to see anything out. in there. Can I, okay. can I ask if we can look at the security footage? Yeah, no, he shows you the security footage. Like, he'll flip a, a, a terminal your way and show you um, where basically he was, like, crouching in an alleyway and, um, like, grabs this uh, um, uh, tall sort of young man uh, and, like, drags him, uh, like, away with a weapon held to his throat and then... Uh, the camera shows them getting into uh, a nearby parked cart and driving off. Did he, like, when he was, like, in the cell, did he say anything? Or, like, I'm gonna get my revenge on so-and-so or anything like that? <laughs> nope. Not much of a chatter. Real I'm gonna kill every grad guy. student here. <laughs> um, okay. I'm gonna lean really close to the sheriff. Mm-hmm of hands. Yeah. Just be sure you're considering there might have been an inside them. <laughs> he just <laughs> You hear that? Steve? Is that you? Steve, did you let him out? And the old man goes I did not, Sheriff Hands. Said, okay, this guy's a dick. I mean, you did just accuse him of his his, his no, agency. No, I quietly of being leaned corrupted. in and gave him a thoughtful suggestion, and he mocked me very loudly. He is now an asshole, <laughs> but I hate him. Well, I mean, you also did walk in and go, "How do we get crime good?" No, still not an excuse. He's an asshole. <laughs> Time to arm the PDCs. Yeah, <laughs> just like back to the ship, everyone. Let's go. All right. Okay. Well, I'm gonna say to the sheriff. I'm gonna. Can I virtually give him my card? Is that a thing? I'll yeah. Sure. It. Pull up your terminal and sort of like airdrop a um, some contact information. Yeah. Just if you think of anything else, please let us know. He looks at it. Hound of Hades. All right. I'm gonna mutter on my way out. I hope you were tired. Of that <laughs> oh, sounds like he was mocking our ship name. But like, get it? Because he said he was gonna die. He was gonna. Re he wasn't gonna retire until he, he dies. He, you hope he dies. Yeah. You're like okay. standing outside. It's a, you know, because he'll die. <laughs> outside, she says that to Jerry. Outside, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got that right. Did you get it? What I said. Though. You get it. All right. Um. We go to uh, Miles and. James, and um, you looking for high quality, medium, or or scummy? High quality. Yeah, might as well. All right. Um, we got cash to burn, 
and I don't know how much James is focused on the job at hand, but right now, Miles is not. Okay. Uh, we might find some info here, but, you know, a little drink will loosen tongues. We have a little drink, a little cards, you know. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, job's got to be fun, right? Might have to play a few rounds, you know, loosen tongues. All right. Uh, so... What's the name of the um, high-quality uh, drinking establishment in Zealous Colony? Um, this is Majority Belters. Um, a lot of people who came from uh, from Ganymede, mostly. The Coriolis. The Coriolis. Perfect. Maybe it's got a bunch of uh, plants and hydroponics on the wall to make it look like the station. Mm, That's a much nicer Boy name than home. my name. What was yours? High quality gambling. Asteroid shower. Oh, asteroid shower. I was uh, I was gonna the say the shower. fancy frigate. The fancy frigate. Um, it was a callback to Earth's death. This friggin' fancy frigate. That hasn't happened yet. Oh right. Um. So. She's go, a psychic killer. You come into the Coriolis, and you can see on the inside, um, they've very, like, subtly organized it so that the walls look as if they have a slight curve to make it like seem like, yeah, very similar to a station. Um, the tables and chairs are, uh, like, the, the tables are all bolted down in sort of the the way that it might be um, on a ship. And there's just a couple of little touches like that that make it very familiar for people who had lived on stations or um, or spun up settlements like Ceres and, and Pallas. And so Pallas isn't spun up. It was Ceres and Eros who were spun up. Anyways. Um... The, it's uh, it's you know early in the morning right now, so mostly you're seeing a couple of people like tidying up uh, spills and tables that didn't get cleaned last night, and like grumbling about how the closing shift should have done this. Um, sorry, too real. Too. Yeah, <laughs> super accurate. <laughs> um, not a lot of like drinking and card games going on in the morning. Well, we'll go up to the bar and get some Medina mushroom liqueur. We're drinking at like 8 in the morning. Yeah. Well, I mean, we'll take a I'm, bottle with us to I'm go. I'm not driving. So. Yeah. <laughs> and no James yet. is going to, you know, do the classic ask the bartender advice. Kind of thing. <laughs> Just washing a glass. About what? Well, about our bounty. Yeah. It's about, no, about just life. About life, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, I Man, how do I get my crew to respect me more? I mean, I keep leaving out booze in a box for them to take. Wait, what? I'm trying to be real nice to them. They don't even <laughs> say thanks. Just walk in and grab it. First of all, I feel like I've been tricked. Um. All right. So the person behind the bar, uh, tall, uh, slender. Uh, non-binary and heterochromia. Um, so, like, as you sort of lean in to chat with them, uh, you see that one eye is uh, is dark brown and the other is very light blue. Belter. Uh, they are a belter, and um, they say, um, "It's not much going on." this early in the day um thanks for coming in the coriolis is at your service i'll get some uh oh, let's see what do you got from off world i'll get that in uh do you got a canteen or something we might be on the move <laughs> to go yeah <laughs> you got, you got sippy cups <laughs> well i mean we we got a vehicle and all that i don't want to leave a drink behind we're not gonna uh, just like grab and go. Sure, sure. It's not the strangest thing that everyone's ever asked of me. I can handle that. Sure. 
Yeah, we're after a bounty. I think you heard about uh, that feller, Noah Sharp. He's a geologist, or I guess oh, pretending yeah. to be one. Earth murderer. Yeah. You find that guy. You... Mm. I was gonna say, you space him. <laughs> what do we do down the well? James just clears... Ah. Or not James. I'm not James. Miles uh, clears the, the pistol at his hip from his coat. All right, that do it. Pump some lead into that pinche. Uh, so uh, I don't know why he asked for uh, to go, uh, <laughs> but the glass with ice would be great. Yep, you can grab your uh, grab your drinks, and uh, so they sort of turn around and like get the various stuff, pour um, a glass for Miles, and uh, pull out like a. A cheap disposable um, bulb, basically, and uh, fill it with some uh, off-planet liquor. Expensive. Slide the two out to you. Ah, thank you. So, is there anybody we could chat with you that you know who would, you know, might have seen something or, you know, might know the outskirts of this area? Mm. All I heard was um, man was arrested a couple days back, breaks out yesterday, takes a car. I don't know much more, but you're welcome to ask around. Yeah, do you know who, you know, has all the cars or runs them or that kind of thing? Might know. I don't know a bit about them. It's all just company things or mechanics um you if you want to sort of like walk around and ask some of the people who are uh cleaning up in here um or like head back out into the town and just sort of ask people we can make that a communications role to gather information yeah. or an invest oh, i'm sorry you're shit at that yeah actually yeah so i have uh yeah communication too i have yeah, if etiquette is the focus, but I have intrigue, which means uh, if you fail a commu communication test with your chosen focus, you can reroll it to a plus two result. In the second trouble. Okay, very That's good. Like yeah, so etiquette or seduction. So you can go around and you can check in with a couple of people. Hey, Zawuki, welcome to the chat. Yeah, definitely can hell. use etiquette and you know be a nice naive. Earther in Belt of Town. <laughs> Sounds good. Tensions here are pretty good. So far, most of the sort of uh, um, inner planet, outer planet rivalries have been left behind in Soul System. Everybody's just trying to live here, and there's quite a lot for most people. So is, James, is James walking away to go talk to folks? Uh, I guess after chatting up the bartender and not getting much, yeah, he's going to go chat up, folks. He's got his drink to go, so. <laughs> he's Miles is going to hang back at the bar for a sec. But, I mean, you won't be laughing when we're in the middle of the outskirts of town. We're sitting around the campfire. Mm -hmm. And I have a drink. Getting ready to get in a shootout, and James is going... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and um, make a communication roll. Can I use etiquette? Yeah, you can go ahead and use. Yeah. You can use etiquette. It's just getting you different information than if you're doing something like an investigation. Like you're hoping for mm -hmm. people's goodwill and talking them up rather than like looking for glues and and so on. What if they hate his yeah. fancy city manners? They might. <laughs> I know, eh? It's 13. Well, he yeah, he's like trained in business, so he would know some of like the belter ins and outs and what to say and what not to say. Because he was trained like as a business guy to make deals, right? Was he trained to make deals with belters? Or other yeah, I mean, he was in like a shipping and receiving kind of company and, you know, trade lanes and all that kind of stuff. So that would have been belters. Were they but, uh, yeah, if belters it, as lesser people? No, they'd be like... <laughs> 
you know, employees and ship captains and, you know, experienced folks in the company. Yeah. So if a 13 isn't enough, I can re-roll that with my talent. Ooh, yes, a 13 would not be enough. So that is a challenging and just sort of like going around hoping to uh, pick up on something. Not going to be enough. I'd say. Yeah. So I rolled a 17. Inimitable? It's stunted. Ooh. That was exactly what you needed. I just said formidable, yeah. which is a 17. Nice. Stunt! Let's check out some communication stunts. All right. So. <clears throat> is there communication stunts or is there just like. Yeah, uh, there are. Yeah, it's in the sort of like social combat rules. So yeah. there might be some stuff like that. Social stunts. For some reason, I don't see it on my cheat sheet, but... General social stunts. It's in the uh, roll 20. You scroll down to game rules. Merrick has it preloaded, because he's amazing. And also, roll that. 20 is amazing. Roll 20, with the handouts and the cool things. Um, I mean, with four, you could flirt. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say, flirt, flirt, flirt. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I've got carousing as a talent too, and that's uh, oh, if I get it to the next one, I can like get all kinds of fancy seduction stuff. So I'm on that <laughs> train. I can do that. Yeah, yeah. sure, I can flirt. <laughs> um, so what basically is going on is that you uh, you go around and you're chatting up with a couple of people, and eventually. Um, someone takes a little bit of a liking to your charm and says, you know, oh yeah, I heard that, um, that sharp guy headed off to the Northwest, uh, took a cart. Uh, if you go over here, you might, uh, see somebody who saw them leave and you follow the trail a little bit. You get to, uh, a witness more on the outskirts of town who swears up and down that um, uh, didn't see Sharp leave, just saw the um, uh, uh, the specialist, Botero, driving out on their own, heading into uh, one of the gorges. Uh, looked, looked pretty nervous, uh, looked pretty scared, uh, but... They got a video saying that uh, the sharp guy uh, abducted this guy and they went out together. So, can't believe everything you see on your terminal kind of thing. Almost like there was an uh, combat! No video footage of that, though. No. Unfortunately, yeah. Cool. All right. So... Um, let's take a quick break, stand up, get water and stuff. Uh, just at nine o'clock. So we'll just be back in like five minutes. And while we do that, we've got some, uh, people hanging out in the chat. And of course we've got some Roll20 giveaways. If you want to throw your name into the, um, into the pool, we will, uh, woo, 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 where is my giveaways? Giveaway open. It is Badlands. Just throw the word Badlands in the chat. We got a couple of uh, modules from Roll20, and um, if you hit the spot where somebody won two weeks ago, you get uh, a Cortex Prime rulebook, because we got a couple of those still hanging out. Um, so, five minutes, we'll be back, uh, and plan more. See you shortly. <gasps>
Hello, welcome back. We had a good break. Are you hiding? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Coming through the portal. Um, the gate. All right. So we have a giveaway open in case uh, you're just hearing this now. Put the word Badlands in the chat and uh, we'll do the roll um, in the next half an hour and uh, give away a cool thing because Roll20 Ambassadors, we get free stuff to give away. That's a genius. Thanks, Roll20! There's no reason not to join. Thanks, Just do Roll20. it. Type the word. It's super easy. And then maybe you get stuff. Maybe you don't use that stuff, but you get it. That's right. That's better than not no stuff. All right. So, the party unsplits. You use your fancy magic technological terminals to find where each of you are and uh, gather back up in town. There's a stampede. Are you looking at the floating light going yeah, around? People coming. <laughs> Uh, I just want to point out, James specifically has to come collect Miles, as he did not leave the Coriolis. <laughs> and has just been sitting, drinking, talking with the bartender since he left to go find information. Nice. Uh, did you find anything useful? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> the sheriff, uh, he wasn't too willing to share info. Okay, she doesn't want to talk about it. Let's move on. We didn't get anything useful. He's old. They headed northwest. That's about all we know. Well, we got. I got some uh, conspiracy theory that that guy never even left town. Yeah, the uh, hostage drove off looking nervous and had no one with him. Some, I think there's somewhere they the could have hidden out. in the vehicle? Ah. I mean, but like, that's just the word of one folk on the outskirts, so I don't know. Hey, um, there's, uh, there's surveillance systems in this town, right? There's a couple. There's a couple of uh, cameras kind of around the, um, the casino area. Mm. Oh, part of the casino. Sounds like <laughs> kind of town there, Miles. <laughs> Better Jen. check it out. Are all the cameras disguised as crows? <laughs> yes, they are the sheriff's eyes. <laughs> um, just oh no, I was just saying like maybe uh, if someone were to uh, attach uh, into that system uh, without consent of that system's owner uh, and check the feeds, perhaps we could maybe catch uh, old Mister Doc slicking around. 
You know, you know, you don't have to talk around it. We do legal shit all the time. That's a great idea. Okay, yeah, I'll, no, just I'll we're in public, so... Vehicle warrant <laughs> just saying. I'm just, I don't know how to do computery, makey type things. Do any of us? I can do those things. I have hey. hey! Yeah, we'll be ready to cause a distraction for you. We'll win a lot of chips and make all the lights go off. Oh, he's specifically I mean, hacking the casino? Is that the only place with cameras? Like digitally? Like the, through the air? The cameras are outside. You will need to get into the administration systems, um, which you're they're not on a network. Um There well no, oh, there would wireless. be there would be a wireless network to get to the cameras. Um so you could try and get in from an access point on one of the cameras or on the um uh in the administration building. I feel like going from one of the cameras would be safer than trying to go into the building. Well I mean Agreed, yes. Just we're here to catch a bad guy, not commit a heist you know like if the heist is the option maybe we move towards that but i say keep the crime parts of our bounty hunting uh, on the minimum we can ask we could ask they probably will say no, will say no but... unless there's an accomplice in there Accomplices, accomplices everywhere. Why would there be an accomplice? I will put money on it. That someone here got him out somehow? Yes, sir. there's an accomplice. Okay. Who and why? Hopefully they aren't a grad we'll, student. We'll figure <laughs> that out. Okay, so you have very little basis for the reasoning. I still would bet you. Okay, how much? My portion of the bounty. Oh, I'm in. I mean, I'm betting there is no accomplice. Deal. He is doing it on his own. He's crazy. Shake on Anyways, it. Back to hacking security cameras. All right. So, um, most of the cameras, like I said, point towards the um, the casino areas to kind of catch. Uh, Anybody who's inebriated on the outside or, um, you know, giving pe giving trouble to uh, people trying to spend their money uh, because, you know, they want to they want to draw people in and make this a nice town. And so they're keeping that clean up. Uh, you'll have to climb up onto uh, one of the buildings uh, carefully and stealthily and then break open one of the cameras so, uh, what are the other people doing as Jerry is setting this up? Well, James is getting some wide-angle shots with the drone as we're rolling up with our four-wheeler. Okay, yep. <laughs> Probably keeping the car warm so we can make a speedy getaway. I better check out uh, the interior just in case alarms get raised. I could perhaps cause a distraction of the... Uh, folks inside i better i better go take care of that just as like an inside man kind of situation you know what i mean are you going to the bar i'm not not going to the bar um jerry do you need any help with like boost can i boost you up do you need that or are you good i mean that'd be nice it's or, also you know, if i gotta like drop something and it, slide down yeah it's also like high noon right now like, you came over here in the morning. This is the middle of the day. Um, the, the front street is pretty busy. There's people working behind buildings. Like, it's going to be pretty hard to escape notice climbing up the side of a building. So should we just ask? I just realized how much of a group of PCs we are. <laughs> like, it just became super clear that it was like, hey, there's a bounty guy. And we're like, got to break into a casino. Merrick's like... I mean, sure. He, he headed northwest. <laughs> you know what that means? We have to commit several crimes. Yep. <laughs> this is going to end with us killing someone. <laughs> I feel like we should 
maybe we should just ask, but we should make James ask because he's all charismatic and whatnot. Oh, suave. Well, if we're rolling into a casino, then we have to have like a classic movie casino entrance. So Multiple the casino, shots. the casinos don't control the cameras. It's it's just the sheriff. Who does? It's the sheriff oh. through the administration building. So I guess, so I guess James it, goes in wait. and asks and finds that out. So let's go northwest. <laughs> okay, so we have like a person saying that they saw this guy driving out of town. You can never trust humans. Uh, secondly, let's just chase after. I mean, if we find the guy who has been supposedly quote unquote kidnapped, great. That's fifty percent of our mission accomplished and we know where he went to that canyon. and then there's maybe some info so maybe let's just chase after the guy who drove out of town and we know he did he went to a gorge uh, got a gorge been, been waiting to open this thing up so yeah um, let's you know what well, let's just get in our let's not break into uh, <laughs> official police cameras in the town uh, that it is currently too early to normally be drinking yeah, let's gorge. Or we Miles do that kind of stuff from our pulls his drink out. Yeah. And remember that you, as bounty hunters under contract for OMAC Group, have a an okay amount of um of like authority. Pull. Yeah, um, like he was happy enough to show you the um, the pertinent uh, video of uh, of Sharp abducting. Um, Botero, and if you were to go back to him and say, like, hey, follow up, we need more, he probably would be fine with it. Merrick, we're going northwest. Yeah, Off Rick doesn't want to go back to the sheriff yeah. and ask for more. We're like, let's go talk to She's like, if you talk to them, <clears throat> well, I'll shoot you. I'll shoot you right here. <laughs> okay, so um, you hop into the, uh, into the off-roader, um, open it up and tear out of town, dust flying behind you um, and, you, and you start going uh, he probably has a day on you and so you you have to move quickly but you do know that they're in uh, you know a vehicle that's not as prepared for this terrain as yours I was going to say they don't have a day on us the way James drives <laughs> so uh let's set that um let's set that speed let's get a piloting roll from james yes yeah. well, uh, yeah. when you control a vehicle it gains a plus two bonus to tests involving its speed perfect and you won't get to use your piloting focus oh that's a piloting talent so i guess that's for okay well is there is there a focus specifically for ground vehicles I don't. There is not. Remember seeing. Oh one. no! Driving. Oh, there is a driving one. There is a driving one. So you're gonna make a dexterity check with your driving, and you're heading out of town. Ooh, man! James is just figuring this vehicle out. I rolled. Oof. Two twos and a one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty How do cars work. <laughs> that's like you try right. to pull up to make you go up. <laughs> yeah, you, I know. you you drive out and uh, you see like sort of the hard packed ground where a lot of people uh, are going, but you see this really nice uh, sort of like side area where you can take this off road for the first time. Do you go and, for it? And it's a manual, and I've only ever driven automatic do you go so for it's the... like it's it stalls like on the hills <laughs> <and it's head. laughs> um does this have seat belts yes so yeah. i'm not just kicked off the back so do you, do you go off-roading or do you stick to the road uh i'm gonna say james has a little trouble with getting the vehicle going and figuring the ins and outs so so He's he, sticking to the main road. He doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like a you got stuck somewhere. It's that you're on the road and you stall it a couple of times before you're getting the hang of it, and you kind of like in the time where you could have made some some good progress, uh, you waste like an hour of time before you're really moving. Yeah. 
I guess a ship pilot does not mean good <coughs> off-road vehicle driver. Yeah. I think those two things do not really correspond well with each other. They're a little different. They're very, yeah. I think everyone else in the car is looking at each other every time it stalls. <laughs> No, every time it stalls, I'm nearly tossed out with my seatbelt going. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, he did pay for it, so uh, I guess he gets to drive it. All right. <laughs> I love that he's like, I got a super fancy version of this car, made sure it was a manual because he wants to feel cool and shifting. And then I was like, oh, I didn't learn how to do this, actually, though. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um. So let's say that it is, you lose a little bit of time, you travel, you get to the canyon that the um, uh, the witness had said the, the vehicle was heading towards uh, as nighttime is, is not quite falling. It's early evening. Like the, the suns are definitely starting to set and you're getting that really like orange goldy glow across um, the area. This whole um badlands terrain that you're moving through is like southern alberta with the hoodoos like we're thinking drumheller and cool. uh, it's dry it's pretty flat there's a couple of hills and stuff um and you come up to this gorge uh do you have anybody here who's actually good at tracking i also it feels oh. like shanghai noon all of a sudden <laughs> What you got, Pedrico? I got a specialty in tracking. I'm and okay. I have a specialty in survival in deserts. Wow. All right. I did a lot of reading. I know how to follow people. Okay. So, um, do you want to, like, head through the gorge and check stuff on the other side or do you want to pop out and like double check that uh they went this direction pop out at the entrance to the gorge okay so go ahead and make me a uh, tracking roll what's that under intelligence or perception that's perception. A, perception that's a gorgeous decision uh also ah. as we Oof. Oh, also, we definitely... Um, I can't be a part of this podcast. We, def <laughs> we definitely passed a couple of scenes, so I'm just going to pump churn up by one. <laughs> that feels unnecessary, I to mean, say it, the least. How did many carry scenes over? have you had? It yeah. did carry over. We're at churn nine. I think you should like quickly tell our viewers what churn does. Ooh, oh, churn is sick. this lovely thing that whenever a scene ends... Ooh, <laughs> Um, I, I will never do that. <laughs> if this uh, becomes a multi-million dollar streaming, I'm never, ever once You're never churning the that. butter. Um, Not once. When things go well for the characters, the churn goes up. And when the churn hits a multiple of 10, there is a chance that things go bad. As karma, the universe, punches back. I hate that a lot. And we're at nine. Yeah, that's what I don't I'm like. I'm so excited. I'm a little it? worried about you. Turn also, down for what? Um, there are the situations. Song. Yeah, there are situations <laughs> where I can spend churn to actually do things. Like I can spend a point of churn to make your gun jam in combat. Just a heads up. That's really Hooray. Awful, news. awful news to hear. <laughs> Okay, so uh, go ahead and make a perception tracking roll, Padrico. This is an average difficulty. Which means what number? 11. Ooh. Okay. It's only shitty if the 6 is on the drama if, die. If That's you, drama die. Yeah, if you roll drama a 6 die. on the drama die, then yes, turn goes up. If, okay, if I rolled two 6s and a 5. Wow. Uh, yeah, plus five. Okay, so... 22? 22? <laughs> um, you can definitely tell that uh, a vehicle with treads similar to what you are looking for passed through here in the last day. Uh, went down through the gorge. 
You tracked their ancestors <laughs> back in Seoul. What did they eat for breakfast? Uh, yeah, there's a there's a, a wrapper that's um, like a little uh, uh, silvery foil wrapper that's caught in like a little bit of scrub growth, and uh, you put it up to your nose and smell, and you're like, mm, dry rations. They're gonna be gassy. <laughs> Even easier to track. <laughs> Nose to the wind, fellas. <laughs> oh. All we got to do is get down winds of them. <laughs> I love how much that upset Joe. Would you say this is a exploration stunt? Yeah, I was looking at exploration stunts as well, if you would like to spend some stunt points. Mm -hmm. I have five of them to spend. You sure do. You should spend four of them. <laughs> Why? Because that increases the churn by one. I know it does. And I hate it. Um, is the encounter our session? What is an encounter? Um, an encounter is an encounter, like an action scene. Sequence. Okay. So if it says, if your success leads to combat within the encounter, receive a plus three. Mm, that's mm -hmm. not, like that's already going to be way long past when we find them. Um, I mean, unless they're hiding in this gorge. In which case, you'd get a plus three. Okay. Okay. I like that. Okay. So I'm going to spend three for the upper hand. The upper hand. Uh, if your success leads to combat within the encounter, you receive plus three on your initiative roll. And churn does not go up. All right. It's definitely in the... Uh... Leaving stun points on the table. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Can you spend multiple on multiple things? You can. Or is it all yeah. in one? You can spend the one more. Um, I mean, I can't help myself but spend it on pay dirt. <laughs> In the course of your endeavor, you win a bet, happen across a conveniently abandoned stash, or discover something valuable you can pawn to make a buck, among other possibilities. Temporarily gain plus one income per stunt point spent? That's pretty impressive. Oh, man. And don't you have two? Uh, you no, have I only have one. Oh, I do. Oh, I have two. two. Yeah, Jeez. so I will, I will spend two on pay dirt. Uh, put it all to, into dirt and live, as I, live large. <laughs> <laughs> show up back in town with gold we don't need, armor. We don't, we don't need a bounty hunt anymore. Let's just walk around the desert till we get drama and, and then stuff. Yeah, pay dirt it. And then pay dirt over and over. Um, Sounds like it be becomes less of a bounty hunting and more of like a gold rush campaign. Yeah. Um, okay. So, <laughs> what do we find that's worth two temporary income? They could have left mm. more uh, dry rations. I got it. I've got it. Um, a lot of rations. As you're as you're getting back up into uh, your vehicle and beginning to drive away, you notice that in some of the like nearby uh, mounds of dust, there's a crate. It looks like there was some cargo on uh, the vehicle that they stole, and it might have been slowing them down, and they ditched it. All right. And All right. So, who do we have to kick out for the box of loot? Jerry. Sorry. <laughs> no, you've got you've got the carrying capacity in this vehicle to throw in one box oh. of loot. Jerry, sorry. It needs your seat. <laughs> it's like there's a whole truck bed. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're almost to the end of the night, so uh, night is falling here on Augia. You're driving through this um, through this canyon. Uh, could I get Tyler? Could I get you to make another drive roll as you go through the canyon? Is there a snake in his boot? All right, <laughs> roll twenty. You right, failed me before. Water. Oh, 15. dexterity fifteen. Okay. I did not stunt. All right. So the canyon is moderately wide. Like, you could probably fit four off-road vehicles side by side here, but you're sticking to the middle where 
it's uh, a little bit more level and uh, you have to weave sort of back and forth between natural outcroppings. Occasionally you have to go up and down over like big uh, mounds of rock and stuff, uh, but you're making good progress. And then there's an explosion. A mining charge goes off on the side of the canyon and a rock slide starts behind you. Uh, Tyler, would you like to describe how James successfully navigates or outruns this rock slide because of your kick-ass 15? <laughs> yeah. Nice. So James has watched too much Mad Max and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, he's feeling already like driving through the canyon in the in the badlands like he's already so he's uh he's learned the shifting a little better so he's gonna get the drone he's got it set up on the dash and he looks looks at the rock slide and then he downshifts gives it a real boost and spins the wheels <laughs> <laughs> what is your what is your shoulder droid's name oh it's just, just a little drone guy he doesn't have a name yet. you got it no he's gonna have a name I don't know. Maybe we've... Somebody might have... Tintin, are you getting this? Tintin. <laughs> Tintin. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It'd be snowy. James is Tintin. He's made of, he's made of tin. Yeah, you <laughs> clearly didn't see the same programs I did. Where is it? Um, it's definitely... Things. Um, But, yeah, so... I. Uh, there's an explosion behind you and like rock shatters, flies down and like there's a whole bunch of chips that like fly over everybody's backs and you just hear <laughs> and rocks are raining down behind you and rolling and um, and James kicks We're it We're facing gear. backwards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're seeing it like a like a, a, um, a fluid slide of rock coming towards you. Uh, but James guns it and gets you out of the canyon you look back and you can see that um like a big section sort of towards the um the far third of the of the canyon has collapsed and you remember uh, this guy was a geologist he's got access to um mining charges and he's obviously set traps behind him oh we're gonna so kill he, this guy so he did make it out that's good to know. Wait, That's I good think, info. I, I think Miles have to do like a dexterity roll to see if he kept his uh, newfound cargo or not. <laughs> yeah, when, he, when James downshifted and did the Fast and Furious cut, right? I'm going to be honest. The cargo was more bolted in than you guys are. <laughs> there was six seatbelts strapped across it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll pick this up in two weeks. Um, people in the chat, you got one more minute as I run through the various things as we end to get the word Badlands in the chat to win something. Otherwise, it's going to our good friend Zawookie, who is the only person who threw their name in it. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming out to the stream or watching on YouTube after the fact. This is Hellbreakers, our Expanse RPG ongoing actual play campaign, yada, 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 by Massive Damage Adventures. Thank you so much, players. Always fun. Always lovely. It's great to always get to know delight. these people. Um, get to know these characters and thank you to honeybell.art on Instagram who we commissioned for these super cool art pieces here and here and here um, and uh, see like the beautiful full things in nice high resolution in our brand new intro video which you can check out on YouTube I put the link in the chat and if you're watching it on YouTube maybe it's going to get suggested to you or you probably saw it at the very beginning. Um, Watch it out. 50 times. That's right. Uh, check out Roll20, um, Roll20.net, and follow us on Twitter at SkyHarmerK, Instagram at SkyHarmerPress, and check out our various ongoing bounties at SkyHarmerPress.com slash Hellbreakers. I think that's all the things that I say at the end. So, let's close up this giveaway and, you know... Draw it for our one draw. Congratulations, Zawuki! <laughs> right, we're gonna look is astounding. Incredible. We're gonna roll and see what you get. 
Where? Basket of hair. Oh, that's a great that's RPG. Right. Really, really avant garde. All right, I rolled a four, which is Fiasco by Bully oh. Pulpit Games. So, oh, fun. Uh, Fiasco is an award-winning storytelling game inspired by cinematic tales of small-time capers gone disastrously wrong. You tell a story about ordinary people with powerful ambition and poor impulse control. <laughs> um, lives and reputations will be lost, painful wisdom will be gained, and if you're really lucky, you might just end up back where you started. You probably won't be lucky. Um, I feel we, very attacked. We first saw this on, uh, on Tabletop with Will Wheaton. So, you know, if you want to know how to play Fiasco, you can dig up that amazing thing on YouTube. <laughs> and, um, Zawuki, I will send this to you uh, via the chat function on Twitch. Yay, Zawuki! All right, thanks for coming out. So our next game is uh, July 11th. And then we're going to take... Um, yeah, and then we're going to take a little break. We won't have a game on the 25th. So it'll be the 11th, and then we're back on August 8th. Vacations. Cool. All right. Um, this time saying the thing at the end? And as always, see you in hell. Nah. All right. Have a good night, everybody.
Just come.